In this very short video, we'll discuss a simple trick that's probably useful in computer graphics. Suppose we want to rotate a body with respect to an axis that points in an arbitrary direction. So it looks something like this. Suppose that the direction of the axis is given by the angles theta and phi, and that we want to rotate the body by the angle alpha. Furthermore, we want to represent this simple rotation as a product of these matrices that represent the elementary rotations with respect to the coordinate axes. Now this rotation is also elementary in a way because it's a simple rotation with respect to a stationary axis. However, this axis points in an arbitrary direction and is not necessarily aligned with any one of these three coordinate axes. So it cannot be represented by a single matrix, but it can be represented as a product of these matrices. In other words, this rotation can be represented by a combination of the elementary rotations with respect to the coordinate axes. Now, what is the right combination? Now, I think that it's actually an excellent question to think about, so I encourage you to pause the video and think about it on your own. You'll find that while it's a little bit tricky, it's ultimately not complicated at all, and you will really enjoy figuring it out. But here's the idea. The idea is to move this axis so it's aligned with the z-axis. Then perform the rotation, which can be done with the help of this matrix because it's an elementary rotation with respect to the z-axis. And once that rotation is done, bring the axis back. So it's three big steps. Bring it here, do the rotation, bring it back. And during the first step of this algorithm, the relative configuration of the axis and the body don't change because you bring them together by the same transformation. Then you perform the rotation and then you bring them back together. So once again, during the last step of the recipe, their relative configuration once again doesn't change. So the net effect of these three steps is to in fact rotate the body with respect to this axis. That's the big idea. Now let's talk about the implementation. How many elementary steps does this recipe entail? And the answer is five, because it takes two elementary steps to align the axis with the z-axis, then comes the rotation, then two more steps to bring the axis back. Now let's discuss each of the elementary steps. What does it take, what are the right steps to align the axis with the z-axis? Now remember how we've done it using the Euler angles. So have, if we were going in the opposite direction, let's think about that because we've already discussed it. The first step is to lean, so we'll start with the z-axis and point it in the direction of the axis of rotation. And then it's the opposite, that's the first step in this recipe. But let's remember the elementary steps. The first step is to lean this axis away from the z-axis, which is done by a rotation with respect to the y-axis, so it's this matrix right here. Then you swing it around to get its longitude right, right? The first rotation got its latitude right. Now the second rotation gets its longitude right, and now it points in the right direction. So that will actually be the final step of this recipe. Remember that the first combined step of this recipe is to actually backwards, is to go from this arbitrary direction to the z-axis. So we'll do those two steps in reverse. First, we'll unswing it, which means that we'll rotate with respect to the axis z by the angle minus phi. Then we'll unlean it. So that's rotation with respect to the axis y, the y-axis, by the angle minus theta. Then the first step is done. Then we'll rotate it by the angle alpha, and then we'll do the two steps that we've already discussed, lean and swing. That's the recipe. Pretty simple. Pretty straightforward. Let's now write it out algebraically. So, five steps. And as we combine them into a single matrix, we have to write them from right to left, of course. So it's hard to judge the space, but I'll start over here. So the first step is to, excuse me, unswing the axis by the angle phi. And of course, when we're unswinging the axis, we're bringing the body with it. So all of these transformations are actually applied 
to the body itself. And the axis is more of an imaginary object that moves along. Excuse me, minus phi. Then we'll unlean it. And that's rotation with respect to the, the y-axis by the angle minus theta. Now it's in position to be rotated by the angle alpha. So that's precisely what we'll do. We'll rotate it by the angle alpha. That, this right here, is the ultimate purpose of this whole campaign. Then we'll once again lean it properly from the z-axis by the angle theta. And then finally, we'll swing it into position as we always do by the angle phi. And there you go, here is the answer. It looks, it looks like a very roundabout way to do a simple thing, but that's what you need to do. And thank God that matrices don't commute because if, matrices, if these matrices commuted, then we could bring these two together and they would cancel each other and bring these two together and they would cancel each other and of course, nothing would work. But it kind of shows that, yes, the ultimate effect is this. And these two steps and the opposite steps are just to set up this step perfectly. So in any case, that's the trick. I don't really have anything else to say about this, except to maybe underline it, and there you go. This sort of idea is used over and over again in computer graphics, and you will see it one more time when we talk about translations and represent translations as matrix products.